into uh, this edition of uh, HFT. We are here uh, live. And we... Oh, shoot. We don't even have the transition here, John. Here we go. Well, there they are. Hey, everybody. It's Dave and uh, Duke here uh, from Hashmark Sports. And uh, we are going to cover... Look for, First and foremost, uh, Duke, your thoughts on uh, NFL draft. Anything. It should be a very interesting NFL draft coming up. I mean, we got arguably the number one prospect in Caleb Williams possibly going to Chicago or any team that's looking to trade up for a quarterback mm -hmm. for the future. There's a lot of rumors out there, so we'll see where he lands. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., a transcendent talent, could fall to either the fourth or fifth pick, depending on how the quarterbacks go in order. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very interesting draft. I'm excited for it. What do you got today for us on uh, these uh, these NFL guys here? This coaching. is all, yeah. This is my uh, all coaching hire team that happened throughout this off season, and I'm excited to see. All right, we got it on the screen now. Who's this? So we got the head coach A. Yep, we got Jim Harbaugh there. Uh, we all know what he brings to an organization. You yep. know, he's coming off a national championship at Michigan. Mm -hmm. He, I'm very excited to see what he does with the Chargers. Myself personally. And what he can do with Justin Herbert because he is a quarterback whisperer, as we all know. Man, I like, I like Justin Herbert a lot. Mm -hmm. I was talking to you by him yesterday. Yeah, and they good. Yeah, the Chargers are in a very good spot. You know, this is probably the team that's going to more than think, likely dethrone the Chiefs in the AFC West. You think Harbaugh went there because Herbert was kind of already. You know, he was he was already there. Yeah, I He's mean, that's probably developed. the best quarterback situation yeah. going for him if he was going to come back into the NFL. So mm -hmm. I think he made the perfect decision for him. You know, it's almost like it could be uh, if, you know, what, what are your thoughts here, too, as we move into uh, Caleb? First, first pick in the draft first. I guess we'll just start there. I mean, a lot of rumors are saying that He's going to go to a team that's not the Bears. You know, him and his team came out with the statement, I don't know how often ago, saying that he was not interested in playing for the Bears. Right. I think the team he's most linked to being going to is the Commanders. Reason being is Cliff Kingsbury was on the coaching staff for USC last year. He's now their offensive coordinator. So it's, it's a good link for Caleb Williams to possibly go to Washington. But we shall see about that. Any any chance you know that they're they're telling Caleb Williams camp go to Chicago great place to be you know uh, I'm sure they're saying that to him but I don't think he's buying it. Justin Fields uh, I think is is fine. I think he's fine, fine. For, for there right now. I mean, you got we'll see what happens. It's interesting. That's why I love the NFL offseason. All right, let's go back to your list here. That's on the screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, anything else on Harbaugh before you go to be here, Antonio Pierce. No, I'll go straight into Antonio Pierce. He Sorry. is one of my favorite motivating coaches to watch and to learn for myself from. He took over a very dysfunctional team when he got the interim tag last year. He is going to be the guy that's going to help this organization get to their back to their ways of old. Now, where was winning. he at? Now, where was he at again? He was, I believe, their linebacker coach last year when he took over. Got it the interim gig but now he's the head guy and i love the hire i absolutely love the hire i think it's he's the right fit for that organization you know he's from compton california mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yep. it's gonna fit him and yep. that raider culture he resemblifies the raiders i agree with that and i'm i just love the hire can we talk about Getsy and the Raiders real quick? What are your yeah. thoughts on that i mean he worked with Devonte adams the raider star receiver back in green bay so yeah. It has a chance to be better. You know, he's looking to prove himself. Yeah. You know, when he got fired from Chicago, everybody rid him off. Oh. Everybody was like, oh, Getsy's yeah. not the guy. He's right. not an offensive mind. Right. This could prove it wrong if he does well this year, but we'll see how their quarterback situation goes. I, You know, I, I think he's a good offensive guy. I do like him. I think... Justin Fields might have been playing some sort of a game where yeah. you know he didn't want him here, and you know that that's that's gonna that's gonna that's be that's gonna there. happen. The one thing that scares me though mm -hmm. is uh, the next guy who, and you can talk about him when you want, um, but he he better be here for a while. This was the problem with Cutler and a lot of Bear quarterbacks, offensive coordinator quarterbacks, because they they never stayed. So. No, they never stayed. 
Um, one second. I'm just pulling up a, a graphic here. You can go into the next one here on your list. We've got offensive coordinator. You broke this into, uh, I like this. Mm-hmm. Offensive coordinator here. We're going to talk about uh, the uh, Cliff Kingsbury thing again here. Yeah, I think with Cl- Cliff Kingsbury, it's going to help the commander's offense get back on track. You know, they were one of the worst offenses last year in the NFL. Mm-hmm. He's going to bring a fresh new mentality for these players. And especially if they go get Caleb, who he coached before, that's the start of something special. Plus, their cap space situation, they have the most money to spend in the league. So they have a really bright future. Yeah, uh, I didn't know they had the most uh, to spend. Yeah, I mean, wow. they're the number one team. I think they have like over 75 mil to spend, so Jeez. they're going to be a team that's going <laughs> to look to reload quick. Do the Bears uh, Do the Bears have a lot to spend here? I think they're top 10, I believe. Okay. And they, let's see here, to, to, to our knowledge here, and this is uh, February 15th, Yep. They haven't done much. I mean, what's going on with this number one overall pick? It's all that. I mean, I believe it was like that last year until like closer to the draft is when they traded the other one last year. So times, it's a, always a mind game. So Let me ask you a question here. Mm-hmm. Last time Bears had number one pick, we know who they took, Mitch Trubitsky, a guy yep. who uh, played two or what, 12 collegiate games, blah, blah, blah. Played pretty well, went to the playoffs, but it, it, could it, is it is anything you, you got to figure no matter what happens here it's a better situation right I mean what both or, situations Bears, have its Bears, pros and cons can the Bears screw this up I don't think they could screw it up okay. I think each situation has its pros and cons but the cons weigh heavier on one side than the other yeah okay that's fair I agree with that all right uh, let's go down the list here. Next, we've got. Uh, and sorry, we don't have you on the screen right now. We're having some technical difficulties. We'll be, be up there in a minute. Mm-hmm. On the screen, we've got Kellen Moore. Yep. Uh, this is the Eagles here. Yep. Talk about this a little bit. He oh. just got promoted. He just got there um, when he was in Dallas and was their offensive coordinator. He made he, he ran a really efficient offense yep. there. He had some really good play calls that yep. blew a lot of people's minds. So mm-hmm. if this works out for the Eagles, and they find their offensive mojo again like they did the year before when they made the Super Bowl. I think it's going to be an excellent hire and pairing with Nick Sirianni. You know, was this something that they had to pull a move on based on the outcome of this uh, past season? I think he was just looking for a gig to bounce back and find a really good offense. You know, he yeah. was with the Cowboys. Then he was with the Chargers last year. They had injuries, so mm-hmm. he didn't really get the chance to utilize all of his weapons to his best of his abilities. Now he has a chance to do that with Philadelphia. I want to get your thoughts on the uh, Super Bowl uh, mm-hmm. really quick. Yeah. What What do you think of the Super Bowl? I thought for the first half of the game, mm-hmm. the Niners just completely had their way with Patrick Mahomes. You know, the first 40 minutes of the game, game time-wise, he did not play well at all. No. He was looking very flustered. Yep. The defense knew what they were going to game plan for him. Mm-hmm. But... At the end of the day, if your offense doesn't capitalize, you're giving Mahomes chances. Oh, yeah. He's one of those quarterbacks you cannot give chances to. I agree. And and over time, when the Niners took the ball and only got a field goal, I knew the game was over. I knew as soon as he got the ball, they were going to win the game. Uh, it was just inevitable. Bro, bro, that could not have been any more like... People were saying scripted. I don't know. No. I don't know. It's, no way. <laughs> I don't really like to use that context mm-hmm. because you can't label it as that when you have one of the best quarterbacks now of all time on one side of the ball mm-hmm. going up against Brock Purdy, somebody who's trying to prove himself with a highly talented offense. Yeah, and you know, not to include the fact that um, you know you've, you've also got Andy Reid on the other side. Yep, you've got. Um, who I thought going into that game was that was really going to be a difference maker was the coaching. Situation. Yeah, it always it's going to come down to that. And then when you have Andy Reid, who's one of the best offensive minds of all time, it's going to work out in your favor. Great footage of him talking about that game winning play. Oh um, yeah. Over over under. But <laughs> if you were on the uh, over forty seven and a half at the close, that was brutal. Uh, congratulations to anybody who hit that line early at forty six and a half. It did hit at forty seven. Took overtime. Um, I also uh, hit the over. Hey, God bless you. 
<laughs> you know, uh, so uh, question here. Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, dynasty now, yes. uh, back-to-back three and five years. Yep, no, without a doubt, they are a dynasty. They're the new dynasty in the NFL. I'll go ahead and say it first uh, because I feel it. Uh, I think greatest of all time, Pat Mahomes. P- uh, Brady, number two, go ahead, your thoughts. I mean, <clears throat> it's early to discuss this. They're both in the same conversation, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Yep. I think it's going to come down to how Mahomes plays the rest of his career, mm-hmm. how many more championships he'll win. How many does he win? Three more? <laughs> Two. I say, I say it, you know what? It's hard to get there. Get My hurt, thing Marl. is, I'm going to say this on air. Two two titles, if okay, healthy. Hold on. I'm going to say this on air because this has been on my mind. I'm going to speak this. You got it. Before the Super Bowl era was even a thing, mm-hmm. Otto Graham won 10 straight championships. Real, 10. Real quick, we got the window open in here and shit. You hear that? 10 straight. <laughs> But no one talks about that because it's about the Super Bowl era. That's all people want to talk about. They want to talk well, about that with Tom. They want to talk well, about that with any quarterback. All about the ring. It's about how you are at the quarterback position. True. And by the time True. that Patrick True. Mahomes is True. retired, I agree with that. He's probably going to be on that plateau. I agree. I mean, Brady. No, don't mind. Don't knock it. Brady made great accomplishments. He was a hell of a quarterback. I'm admitting that. Brady was a hell of a quarterback. But the way that the position is being played now, mm-hmm. mobility, different eras, mobility, yep, different eras factor when it comes to this topic. I will tell you this, and the reason I said that was people they've been hot about this all week, and I'm like, look, you know, I'll tell you what, Mahomes still playing, like he said, and um, you know, if he's healthy and they got Kelsey, go ahead. But I think. Why stop now, boys? See if Reed and company can go for the three, Pete, and officially stamp that like maybe greatest run of all time. Because I do think that it will be if they three. This, this is the best. This is a, this team beats that uh, uh, one of those those Patriot teams, except Randy Moss. I think they might have had that one, even though they lost. Sorry about that. No, right? did they I make mean, it to the Super Bowl that year? They did. Yeah, right? no, yeah. they did. They yeah. lost that. That was Brady's first Super Bowl loss. Eli, what a, what a throw! That was an amazing throw. I best, mean, best throw ever, maybe. Best that's catch arguably. ever. Best catch ever. How about the lineman, though? Oh, wait. Can we talk about – there's a play in the Super Bowl mm-hmm. that happened. Uh, and I think it was the trick play that San Francisco ran. For me – I su- thought it was an excellent play call. Okay. When they showed Deshaun and Andy Reid after that, um, I said, oh, my, you, you, you shouldn't have done that. You should not have done the trick play, and, <laughs> and, and here's why. Reed's got a Jordan mentality, and I even think the NFL was like, "You ain't winning a Super Bowl on trick play," and and they were like, "We we need." You made this comment two weeks ago. You're like, "The league needs that Brady, call it scripted or entertainment." I, I there was no doubt in my mind that Casey was winning that game mm-hmm. with a minute seventeen left in in regulation. I told my parents, you know, they're like, "Oh, here's San Francisco." I said, "Get hold on tight." I go, "You're gonna give Patrick Mahomes a minute and forty three, whatever the fuck it was, minute fifty three. Say he'll score in two seconds." Right? He, yeah, he did it in the playoff game Stupid. against the Bills where he had 13 seconds yeah. to, to run off plays to get in field goal range. He got that. Okay, let's talk about the sorrows now. Bills okay. Bills fans. I mean, what now? What do you do? When it comes to Bill, the Bills organization, they need to find a running back. They need to find key pieces in different spots if they're going to make a run to win the AFC. Right now, the AFC is a clear cut right now mm-hmm. until somebody makes the moves this is what the nfl offseason is about how are you going to build the perfect team to de- dethrone patrick mahomes and the chiefs how are you going to do it i think there's a couple teams that can mm-hmm. and have the ability mm-hmm. to do it mm-hmm. they just have to put the money in the right mm-hmm. spots and the players in the right spots 49ers obviously making a move they got rid of the defensive coordinator like you talked about yeah steve wilkes he's now got, he got relieved of his duties what, what do you do as a 49er fan at this point I think they're just trying to find themselves. I mean, Purdy. But that Kyle sucks. Shanahan is known for this. I've said this to many people. Mm-hmm. When it comes to big games and big moments, he does not perform. He doesn't call his best game. The Aces aren't up his sleeve when it comes to the Super Bowl, no. the NFC Championship game. That that Until pl- he wins that, that's always going to be his label. And that play that Andy Reid ran at the end of the game to get back at him was that there's a great, there's great footage out there again of him talking about it was the only right side play they had. Trips left and uh, yeah, 
Man, what a route. What a play. I mean, there was no – they just – they had him. I mean, you could have probably ran a million plays that he's got in the offense. There's always a million great plays in that. <sighs> All right, too early to tell Super Bowl 59. Who do you got? What do you got? It's way too early. We no, got to – No, have to, you've got to give one. I'm giving one. Who do you got? Uh, I can't yet, man. I, I mean – I'm going to go I'm gonna go on, on the wild side here. All right, I'm going to give you the prediction. I'm going to wait till the offseason plays out for that. I'm going to give you one. Okay. I'm going to go um, – Detroit Lions get there out of the NFC. It's um, very possible. And they play Kansas City. Um, okay. A lot of people forgot this. the first game of the season this year. Mm-hmm. It was a Thursday night football game. It was in September 9, 2023. It was the Kansas City Chiefs against the Detroit Lions. NFL tried very hard to get Detroit Lions in there. They wanted to. They even had Eminem there. I don't think they wanted San Francisco in there because now um, – but. Are the San Francisco 49ers the Buffalo Bills of the 1990s when they were losing to the, to, the, to the Cowboys? Very possible. And I think we, beside, I think it's going to be Lions, 49ers, NFC Championship game again. Same venue? It could be a fucking repeat. Real quick, your thoughts, Ravens fans. Is it? Is he a choker? Why can't they get it done? Lamar? Chiefs have their name. What's up? Yeah, I, when it comes to the big moments... The Ravens ran an offense all season, right, where it was the, focused on the run. It was mm-hmm. all run-heavy offense. Mm-hmm. You run six plays in the NFC championship, AFC Championship <sighs> game. You run six only. Why do people do and that? And go to all Just pass. play your normal fucking what got you there. Because they want to do what they can to dethrone the top dog. Got it. But when it comes to the – when you're being at your best, you play your best, you do what you do best. Why change it up? I mean – I, I knew that Lamar was not going to win that game. I said that oh, to yeah. multiple people. <laughs> yeah, that was, and even that was you, obvious. That was, oh, yeah. Even yeah. you. We got to pull, pull the tape. That's not going to happen. Pull the tape. All right, let's go uh, down the list here. Mm-hmm. Well, we got to tighten it up here. But we got now uh, yeah. our uh, passing game coordinator here, Thomas Brown. Uh, yeah. For the Bears, Chicago Bears make, make Duke's list here. Wow. I mean, when he took over the play calling dues in Carolina last year, they had some of their best moments on offense with him calling the plays. When Frank Reich got fired, their offense clicked at certain moments. They were putting up points. They weren't struggling to move the ball. I think that's going to help Justin Fields because that's going to teach him how to put up his best numbers throwing the football because everybody's questioned him throwing the ball. It's 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 crazy to me. It really is. So mm-hmm. the, the run game... Okay, so plus in, when it comes to Thomas Brown coming from the Sean McVay coaching tree, that's always going to be successful. I do enjoy that because I think they'll be able to have a little bit more of an aerial attack approach yeah, there as well. That's why yeah. it was a great hire for them. Uh, let's go run game here. Uh, we got run game coordinator here, Anthony Lynn at the Commanders. I like this, especially if Caleb's going to be there. Yeah, and especially the fact that the 49ers run attack was so great all season long and he was in charge of the run game. Like, it's going to be a no brainer. It was a no brainer no for them to do that. No brainer. Defensive uh, coordinator Jesse Minner making the list here for uh, my mm-hmm. my now uh, L.A. Chargers. I think I've I've, I've switched over my ASC team. I might be a Chargers fan this year. <laughs> Look out for some Charger gear. I'm really hoping that they have a great year. You know, yeah, Harbaugh. I agree. I, I agree. I've always been a fan of his coaching style, and mm-hmm. the fact that he brought his defensive coordinator from Michigan to the Chargers. Ugh. That's going to keep them on the same competitive level. And with Jesse Minter, I he has NFL experience. From a draft perspective, mm-hmm. what do they do? Do they do the they, Chargers? Do they try to bring in a quarterback from uh, Michigan here no. or no? no? Okay, okay. I think they they need to go after a position player or an offensive lineman. I okay. think there's a couple good options you can give the Chargers. Got it. But when I do my mock draft, I'll leave it out there. Yeah. That's future, in yeah. the future for us. Yeah, no, for sure. So, yeah, we got the whole mock coming off here with, yeah, the, we with do. the dry erase board. So, so that'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'll reveal that, my what I think they should do during that show. But um, Okay, uh, let's go down the list here. Uh, mm-hmm. You did Minter. Did you do Jesse Minter? Yeah, I did. Okay, so uh, we got next year defensive line coach Daryl uh, Tapp here. Again, commanders making the list again. What are they doing over there? I mean, he helped make the 49ers defensive line one probably the best in football. You know, they have a bunch of Pro Bowl, all pro defensive linemen on that team. He was a part of that coaching staff to help that defensive line become the best. And I believe that's what the commanders needed. 
Yeah, I mean, look, the Commanders are a team that are, you know, clearly they're making moves here to, to, to really have some some sort of an impact here yeah. uh, on on this uh, this year. And mm-hmm. I, I think if you look at the overall uh, approach by uh, the Raiders, and this is something that we could bring uh, uh, the Beast in to, to talk about maybe in a little bit uh, at some point because he is obviously a Raiders guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Eastlick, part of the uh, hash mark show there, but uh, let's move on here. Cause, wait, did we do? Yeah, no, we're still on the Raiders, or is this? Did we do this one? No, we have not done that one. All right, pass. Uh, we got the uh, pass rush specialist here, Andre Carter, on the other Raiders. Another Former Pro Bowl defensive end. Wow, it's going to help Max Crosby become even more great than what he is. You like the Raiders this year? I think they're going to have a chance to become a playoff team. Yeah. I, I think I think Devonte Adams uh, becomes a vocal leader. When you yeah, and especially yeah. when you have AP as your head coach, mm-hmm. you're gonna go places. All right, let's jump here. Linebackers coach Ken Norton Jr. at the Commanders again. Commanders making the list again. What the? They're they're gearing up. I think when it comes to what the Commanders are doing in their coaching staff, mm-hmm. Dan Quinn is assembling a very good staff. Yeah, he's a defensive minded head coach. Worked with Ken Norton Jr. in Seattle. Mm-hmm. They won a Super Bowl together. You know, he's a that's a great addition, I think, for the linebacker position. He has a lot of knowledge. He was a former linebacker himself. I like Ken. Three Norton. time Super Bowl champ as a player in the NFL, so And didn't the 49ers just get a Hall of Fame guy we were, you talked Patrick about? Patrick Willis. The the yes, show. they did. I wanted to talk about that because yeah. he I believe not is he the youngest player no, to he's, go in or is this just He's still a young to get in the hall, but I mean he's been eligible for a couple of years now. Now that's kinda interesting to me because he is young. He's only been out of the league for five years, right? No, he's been out of it ten. Oh, okay, I see. But you gotta be eligible for five. Yeah. All right, next here, uh, we got the B, Navarro Bowman, Chargers again. Former 49er All-Pro linebacker, played for Jim Harbaugh, Mm -hmm. has some of his greatest seasons (laughs) with the 49ers and Jim Harbaugh making a Super Bowl appearance together. Yep. I think it's a great addition for what the Chargers need at the coaching level of linebackers. Yeah, you know, I look at a guy like Navarro Bowman, mm-hmm. and this is a this is a guy who can really uh, impact. Let me see where this is. This here. is a guy you pulled your Chris Collinsworth impression real quick. Did I just do that? <laughs> yeah, you didn't even catch yourself. What did I say? This is a guy yep. here. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is a guy here who just plays the game. Yeah, so I know. Well. Oh no, I can't hear that. All right, anymore. let's wrap. Let's wrap it up here. Uh, final thoughts right. on uh, the draft coming up here, April twenty fifth, when we do our draft board here. I'm very excited for it, man. I think it's going to be a great draft. What are the Bears going to do? Personally, I think they're going to trade it away mm-hmm. to get more picks and more yeah. pieces. All right, adios. We'll see you guys. Uh, it's been an HFT special with the window open, oil trucks in the background. We're in Saudi Arabia this week, live. <laughs> hello there. Let's see. Um, hello.